clouds are pretty nice today. Anyways, so I'm Mr. Helsh here, and I present to you the Remington Model 2 portable typewriter. So, this machine, I believe, is from the 20s. It's pretty neat in its design because in order to type on it, so right now, you can see, everything's actually working. Let's show you first of all. I guess, probably be nice to do a look around of these machines before actually doing anything. Made in the USA. Beautiful Remington badge. So basically, in order to make this machine very portable, almost the size of some ultra portables that would follow it, um, they have a special mechanism we have to pull this guy out and just slide this up. See? Basically turns it into an oblique typewriter. And it's kind of reminiscent of some much rarer machines like the Salter Visible. Visible. I forget what else. Um, Yeah, that's what me. Oh, yeah, the Horton, which is a Torontonian typewriter, actually. I don't know if it's actually related to the Horton, like the guy behind Tim Horton's, but. Anyways. Yeah, so you can see here that the type bars, they hit down almost like in a downstriking typewriter, like the Salter typewriter that I showed in my very first video. Um, so the character lock right now is engaged, so you can see that. Basically just pull it out. If you want to engage the character lock again. You press on this part, not the carriage release, this part. And then you press the platinum knob back in, and then it will lock. That's if you're transporting it um, around you, or bring it to some place, but I guess when shipping I'd advise to keep it unlocked and instead use something else in case somehow the carriage lock itself ends up breaking. You don't want that to happen. So in shipping you just tie this down like this. Allow it to shift, but have lots of padding, maybe some twine to prevent it from moving, and that will protect both the carriage lock and the escapement from damage during shipping. Okay, so, yeah, it's not that much. That's paper release. No stencil mode on this machine, it seems. So, that's the ribbon selector. Backspace, shift lock. No tab on this machine, like on the Royal O. This is your carriage return. I mean, carriage, carriage return and line advance. Uh, that's the line finder. And this is your margin release. Okay, let's type. Some other days I've had the wind blowing in my face, blowing the paper toward me, which is troublesome. Today it's blowing the other direction, which is somewhat convenient. This machine feeds pretty nicely. Guess it'd be more apt 
to have the camera higher, like thus. It has a pretty nice, I find it has a more papery sound now. It does have some paper stands right at the back here, as you can see, just fold those in. But I find them rather useless because the paper just goes back like this anyways. I mean, I guess it kind of helps prevent the paper from dragging on the desk or anything else. About to me as useless as the paper guide on the Hermes 3000. So, 2021. Uh, two, the time is 4.38. And at the gradually setting sun. Shift lock. Typewriter does have a pretty nice and satisfying snappy feel feel to it, sorry. Now my definition of snappy on typewriters is basically it's kind of the equivalent of what I call an inertial feel, or where the inertial component is more dominant. So by inertiality I mean that so you either have a spring, a plane spring, which will normally have a linear force curve. So if you go one centimeter, it will be this force. If you go two centimeters, the force will be doubled. On some typewriters, the leverage of the mechanism as well as the inertiality may cause the force curve to go like this, or like this sometimes, like on some Smith Coronas. Um, this is what I associate with the Hermes machines as well as the Adlers. Um, these machines, this particular machine as well as the Royal, bit harder to describe. It's probably closer to linear, but a lot snappier. And by snappy, I mean it's kind of like this, basically, or more Gaussian. Meaning that as you press the key, you're accelerating the action, but the action, to an extent, is able to maintain its momentum while your own finger decelerates, causing the force to decrease a bit during the stroke. That makes for a snappy feel, as well as a snappy sound. I don't think this machine ever had paper bales, or was ever designed with paper bales, so as a result it tends to sound rather papery also while typing compared to other machines. Also, oh, okay, it does have a type, it does have a type guide. For a moment I thought it didn't have one, but yeah, it's right over here. That's a type guide for maintaining the horizontal alignment. Now, like on the Royal O, the escapement um, actuates or advances the carriage on the release of a key. And I find that causes, when you're typing faster, let's see. You may or may not see more issues with horizontal alignment. Well, at least, like, you see that in the cum, right? C-O-M-E. The C-O there is a bit squished together, which is a problem with alignment. Um, right. So, if you go here, you encounter the, the right margin stop. And if you want to keep on typing, you just lift this. And then eventually you'll get to the very end. Okay, let's type. Yeah, I guess maybe today specifically, this machine's deciding to feel a bit more satisfying than I remember. It's a different kind of 
like I think, yeah, the Royal O has a shallower slope, which can help a bit with faster typing. Um, and it also has a bit of a shallower feel. Um, but this machine, something about its inertiality or the force, it's as though it persists more in a satisfying way. So, kind of reminiscent of the Adler Gabriel 25 that I have, but still very different in feel. Of course, as you may see throughout these machines, um, the backspace can vary on which side. Um, and my, I believe it's probably IBM, which you'll see in a later video with a particular machine, who pioneered, or basically the ANSI layout on the Model M has origins as early as the 1930s, so that will be pretty cool once I post that video. Okay, about the matter of... This machine has one of the nicest and purest sounding bells of all my typewriters. Yeah, this ribbon's still in pretty nice condition, decent condition. Makes pretty fair impressions. Lots of planes. Ooh. Good clown it. <laughs> That's a nice cloud. <laughs> I like wispy clouds. remember initially being off-put by the rather shallow spacebar. I believe the Remington, or if I remember correctly, the Remington number 10 also has a pretty shallow spacebar. Let's go for this view. We can see a bit more of the type bars falling down in this oblique fashion.
positions back here and EMB and police and shit. to see this particular view, the typewriter, where the type bars are coming right. Oops. I meant to say when the type bars are coming right toward you, I decided to fall backwards the camera. <laughs>
was talking about teletypes, those are really cool machines. Um, I believe Curious Marcus has a wonderful video on the Model 19 and Model 15 and how that works. It's an amazing um, demonstration of those machines. So I guess, yeah, I'll give you my, my recommendation to check those videos out. So, yep, that was the Remington Model 2 typewriter. Um, now, basically, if you want to stow the machine away, you would engage the carriage lock like this, and then you would pull this guy back. Now, some of these keys like sticking. That's it.